Warning, the following Otaku Generation podcast has content of an adult and mature nature and is not necessarily safe for work or appropriate for children under the age of 18. If you are easily offended by content of this type, please stop this recording. Parental discretion is advised. The opinions and viewpoints expressed on Otaku Generation are those of the cast and crew and the individuals that express them and are not necessarily associated with the sponsors or guests of the show. Otaku Generation is a Red Apple production which is solely responsible for its content. All impressions are poorly impersonated, and please, for the love of God, don't try this at home. like we had a couple leftovers after the last takeover attempt. Either way, from everybody here at R5 Central, happy holidays! Well, welcome to Otaku Generation. Generation. Next generation radio for otaku. Our podcast brings all the otaku to the yard. Do you think what we did last summer was weird? Just imagine what we have planned for today. We're still broadcasting from OGNetworks.tv in a basement where winter happens a lot. Show number 759, December 25th. 2019 with this week's topic techno ties colon edit and i and now things you didn't get for xmas number one red dead redemption 2 for the commodore 64 number two the deep impact dvd bonus points if you know that reference three a tickle me elmo four the last piece of the puzzle and five the return of my chemical romance oh wait we did get that hooray and now someone who's considered to be an xmas baby and he's jewish alan chase <laughs> Hey everyone, how's it going? Happy, merry, holiday, Christmas. What do I always say? I don't even know anymore. Merry Kwanzaa, Mass (laughs) Nucus or something. I don't even know. Ramadan. (laughs) So we're in there. Hi, hello everyone. Uh, I am Alan. I'm Bryce. And I am Paul. And uh, as expected, we don't have any Matt. Yeah. Um, we won't until the flip of the year. Nice. Um, yeah, so uh, we're doing some interesting things here. We're recording everything all sort of up front. <laughs> um, we got, oh, we got a big box of stuff from Nando. So there's that. Um, so let me, let me grab that. Big box. I need to take a picture of that. That is a big box. That is a big I box. I cannot deny that. The story checks out. Yeah. All right. Let's see what's inside. Oh, did you want to read that? Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's probably not from Nando. That might be from Nando. Nope. This is not from Nando. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was just about to start reading. <laughs> I think that's <laughs> made from with me. utmost love and care. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so uh, first, thank you, Nando, for yep. sending us mm-hmm. stuff. Uh, so yep, just that. a nice uh, note saying that it is from Nando, which is awesome. Okay. Uh, I got oh, it. plastic wrap. You oh, shouldn't have. Yeah, bubble wrap. I People love that when you pop that on. I don't, I don't even know. Oh, that oh, looks right. tasty. Right. Well, I'm just going to start handing you. Okay. Right. Oh, man. Here comes, the, here comes the food. All right. What we got? Oh, my God. There's more food. Yes, we've heard that... Uh, Video casts of people eating food are big in Korea, so we're trying it in podcast form, where you can hear us smacking our lips. I don't even know what to do. I'm just going to start stacking the boxes. Oh, man, this is a lot lot of boxes. I hope. Uh, Apparently another box of stuff is is coming to us. From him? Yeah. Oh, wow. Thank you, Nando. I I say before I open the box, but... (laughs) Okay, I'm going to start taking some kind of pictures. This is already, (laughs) this one box has already got plenty in it. Yeah. Beautiful cookies. Oh, cookies. Oh, Oh, it's the same as mine. Maybe you got one for each of us. Oh, that's that's probably nice. That makes sense. That's very Uh, nice. We got, I got so many of them. I'll, uh. All right, well, he got us cookies. Oh, Uh, actually, lots of cookies. We got lots of boxes. So, uh, I'll make sure definitely, you know, hold on to one so that Matt gets some. Um, Jefferson's never here. Botas has never surfaced. Mm-hmm. He's, you know, Botas is sort of done with the show as of like this year, technically. <laughs> so he yep. was like, he had, a, yeah, I'm done. He added a lot to it over the years. 
Yeah. Um, so anyhow, so uh, we got a lot of boxes. So Nanda, thank you for that. And mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to start having some. How's the cookie? You mm -hmm. you got into a cookie, Paul? I have. Yeah, and. It is a Christmas tree. It has a nice bit of ginger in it, and mm. it is really tasty. Mm. Okay. I'm going to wait till break or between the two shows we're recording. <laughs> <Is it just laughs> so, Nando, no, you'll have to turn in next week. For <laughs> turn in next week, yeah. My opinion on the um, cookies you sent us. For, 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 yeah. Us. yeah, so, yeah, it was awesome. Thank you. And, yes, there was a big box, and there was um, at least uh, six boxes, which have multiple cookies. There's only the three. Is there more than that in there? Multiple delicious cookies. Oh, okay. Yeah, there so there was a Christmas tree, Santa Claus, a snowman is what I saw on the top. And there's also this other... So uh, no, he's other had, he's had another, like, uh, extra extra box of cookies. Oh, yeah, and there was an extra box of, of cookies. So oh, I'll uh, I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll get pictures of everything. Nice, higher quality pictures <laughs> than just my phone. Um, yeah, so thank you for doing that. So anyhow, moving along from that, I guess we maybe give a shout out to Anderson's Authentic Danish Pastries. Mm. That's oh where yeah, these are from <laughs> cool. John and I recorded a polymatic, so that's good. Um, I assume before the year is out, Kyle Luke will have a show, so probably next Sunday. Uh, but yeah, you know, happy holidays to everyone. Um, so obviously, I got a lot of stuff to cut down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is. It is the nature of how things work Appreciate around here. Shiva. An uncut show for the patrons. <laughs> uh, well, cut with yeah, all the crap yeah. in it. No, yeah. we don't want to Thank punish you. them. We Thank want you. them to keep patronizing um, us. <laughs> I also, I also gave you guys some gifts because um, yeah, it is technically the too. release of the show is Christmas. Do so. that first before what's chat. What's freesh? What's bang? What's squeak with the UD crew? Indeed, it's yeah. Christmas and uh, we have cookies. Cookies. Okay, so we're gonna do gifts. Yeah, Why? I give you guys stuff. Yeah, see, I'm doing whatever. Yeah. <laughs> sure. we'll grab it. Thank you, Bryce. Uh, well, thank me. Yeah, and see what I got you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he's going into. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> oh, thank you. And yours is digital, I'm afraid. Oh, that's fine. Right. Not so, so really is, dramatic. So is yours, but yeah. Oh, is um, it? Is it? Are you guys giving each other Steam Steam gifts? <laughs> no, I mine's a Switch game. Ah, actually. Okay. Yeah, so well, that's well, cool. I really wanted to give you this one, and there's no physical version, so I was yeah. like, well, the best I can do. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> can you can you gift the game? Or no, you, you can't. The e it's one of the, the super yeah, I bought it. I bought off Amazon. I sent you a card. Okay, so cool. I just for the email. So yeah, um, <laughs> mostly didn't print correctly, but the code did. So oh, awesome. sign our cool. Wild Hearts. Oh, nice. This is one of my favorite games this year. For sure. Oh, okay, is this is this the new one? Yes. That's the, the new one, yeah. Oh, okay, Builders cool. Too, yeah. Thank you for that, Paul. Yeah. And I, I, so, there's, there's Dragon another Builders one. 2 from Paul. Dragon Quest Builders, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And uh, there's another another one coming via Steam as well. So. Oh, is there? Okay, yeah. cool. Well, thank you so, for that. Yeah. yeah. I hope you like Sign of Wild Hearts. It's not the longest game, but I've played it through many times. Cool. Now. That's it's awesome. Fun, no, like, I've, I've read like a, about it, yeah, and, and a, you've talked it up, so that's awesome. So, thank you very much. Yeah, no problem. It's a very cool, like, synth pop album experience, I think. It's very yeah, I've heard it described as sort of a playable album, yeah, almost. Yeah, yeah, and it has a great look to it. So I've been pretty impressed. But I was pretty, it was a big surprise. I didn't really expect okay, cool. it. Cool. Awesome. Well, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Well, thank you, Bryce. Mm -hmm. Trying to see what... Oh, USB Type-C... Oh, hub. Oh, okay. You got me accessories. This is what was on your... You were on your wish list, so I got just a bunch yeah, of yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Are these helpful? Having more of these is always okay, good. good. Right. Yeah, I got one of those upstairs. So I have this... Um, I found this... Saw uh, Brent, uh, sixty watt like ten port USB fast charger, and so I had one upstairs that I used for like all the battery charging for like everything, especially with the film. But I was like, oh, I could always use another one. So Bryce got me that. So thank you for You're that. Welcome. Awesome. You definitely give a good range of prices on your wish list from like fifteen hundred dollars yeah. to five dollars, which I appreciate. What me? Because you you had like um you probably had something for the podcast equipment on there. It would cost like hundreds of dollars. Like, well, someone might get that, not me. Though, oh afraid. no, I don't think I. I the likelihood of anyone getting no, anything like that. No, it's cool to have a good range though. Maybe someone yeah. really likes you that year. Yeah. Like, <laughs> oh, this is a uh, like another like a USB USB C hub. Okay, cool. Right, that has um you know has HDMI on it. Oh, so, so yeah, no, I always um. That'd be helpful Look, for you. I yeah yeah this is this will work for me. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the things that's like interesting with me with with these things is I like gifts that I can do stuff with. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, games are good too. Mm -hmm. You know, mugs are good too. It's fine. But like, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I uh, typically most of the stuff that I will use utilize the most will be gear. <laughs> yeah, because I do. I put stuff to use. Yeah. Um, and so, like, I remember one year I had these, like, these acoust acoustic foam things that you guys have. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, had that on my list, and Dave was like, you sure you want that? 
mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, I just need a bunch of them because I want to try it out for acoustic stuff because we type on our laptops and it's like, you know, you hear it. It, yeah. it gets its way all the way up the, the mics. And he's like, are you sure you want it? And it's like, yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And it, they're like, okay, they're a few dollars a pop, but when you get four of them, let's say, it's like 40 bucks. So, uh, you know, to him, it was like, well, this doesn't make any sense. You know, it has to be like a pop figure or something. No, nope, it doesn't have to be for me. Do not get me a pop figure. <laughs> Did you get me a pop figure, Alan? <laughs> Did I? Yeah. No. Okay, good. No, no, no. Did, <laughs> do you, it's real simple. No, I don't want a pop figure. That's fine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Under no circumstances do I want a pop figure of anything. No. I also, I, you know, price does matter to some point but the i got you i got you open it? Right. i oh, hope i, I hope someone else didn't get it for you so there's that so okay. yeah I'll, I'll take pictures of all this stuff Where is this? Um, oh, i mean it should if you got my wish list it should oh perfect no no one else got me this yet uh it's the blu-ray oh, collection nice. of haven't you heard i'm sakamoto that is a good which show. will come up later when we talk about our best anime <laughs> of the decade so. <laughs> <laughs> spoilers <laughs> Cool. And Thank what you. Do we have here. Yeah. Okay. I have something oh, okay, so labeled in Chinese. I uh, I want interesting on this. Okay. I thought I would appeal to the the nerd in you. Okay. There is a lot of um, nerd in me. I cannot mm-hmm. deny it. Uh, yeah. And so uh, yeah. So I thought uh, I would get you something, and it does work. Yeah. It's not just a model. Okay. It it's it, it legitimately works. Do you have the scissors for him? Oh, oh I, I do. Oh wait, actually, I have a scissors here. Right okay. Here. Well, he's got. Cool. I got one. Oh, okay. Maybe easier than like a pen trying to. <laughs> yeah, this one is oh, yeah, a little I extensively didn't... sealed here. Yeah, you should be good to go. But with Amazon wish list, I'm pretty sure once someone claims it and buys it, it takes it off my list for anybody else that looks at it. Right. It won't if do it for me, so I don't know. Only if no. you click through and oh, then okay. commit to it, and it's linked okay. that way. Otherwise, what ends up happening is people go ahead and they they search for the part. Oh, after they see the list, yeah. Yeah, they see the list, then they find it, then they order it, There's and then do it doesn't that, yeah. track anymore. Yeah. That's so true. it's a Sterling engine, Paul. Okay. <laughs> it's a oh. Sterling engine. Sterling engine. Oh my, that is a hell of a Sterling engine. That and is, it does work. Man, look that at that. That's really rad looking. What does that it do? That is uh, <laughs> some ni- a nicely machined uh, bunch of metal with uh, looks like maybe steel and brass. Huh. Is that aluminum or steel? Oh, yeah, I don't God. know. That is uh, very nicely made. Wow. Yeah, that yeah. is gorgeous. So I figured, that, you know, even if it sits up on a bookshelf. Oh, uh, no, this it is, does this work. It's really cool. Yeah. Yeah, so that's it. Oh, that's, that's, that's awesome. Well, yeah. thank you very much. That yeah, is, I just, that is really sort of, sort of, it's sort of like, what do I get, Paul, every year? <laughs> For the man who has everything, you yeah. have a Sterling engine. I don't have a Sterling engine. I cannot deny <laughs> well, you it. you do now, so I can't get you that yeah. next year. Uh, I can take a picture of this because this is super awesome looking. Yeah, so awesome. So now i got more games. You know, the thing is, for all my travels, I was away in Dallas for a few days. Uh, it was pretty brutal. I worked like a, a, I don't know, I worked, I worked too many hours. Um, but it was pretty brutal because I got up at like 4.30 in the morning and I was basically on my way to the airport by 5 a.m. And um, yeah, it was it was totally brutal. But I did not, I did not, I brought the switch, but I didn't even open it up. Mm-hmm. Like it didn't even get turned on. Yes. Um, yeah. So and I, by the time I was coming back, I just kind of, all I wanted to do was sleep on the plane. Yeah, I guess. So, yeah. I'm so, not- there's... Obviously, there's trash cans if you want to toss all the crap Well, out. I'm actually uh, c- checking carefully because there are these little bits and pieces oh, with there? extra parts that oh, are okay. attached. <laughs> oh, okay. Beautiful Sterling engine was fell. Yeah. You know, maybe you just put it all in the bag yeah. <laughs> and take the bag. Um, yeah. I do find myself on, I like sort of, before like a, a long plane trip, I'll like prep my Switch, get it all updated, get all the games I want on there, blah, 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 and like all the other, and the comics on my pad, and then I end up just like sleeping most of the trip. <laughs> it's definitely... <laughs> Something I do, but yeah, you know. Yeah, I'm gonna hmm. get into the. Let me get into a snowman. All right. All right. So do not uh, do not contact any part of the boiler and cylinder and heating process with your hands to avoid burns. Oh wow! Oh this yeah, is legit. This is, yeah. <laughs> it so does this is work. Awesome. So, yeah. yeah, actually, I don't know if I mentioned on the show that a couple years back I took a, a steam engine operation class. Oh, I really? I remember that. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's for operating steam traction engines, which are I... the sort of tractor things from around the turn of last century. Yeah, I think I do kind of remember yeah. that. Was that out in, like, Lehigh Valley? Uh, it's the other direction, out towards Lancaster. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's a, a, a museum of them, and every, a couple mm-hmm. times a year they have drive-ins where people bring these gigantic threshing engines in. So, Okay, well, this is super awesome, so thank you. Yeah, so I just thought, oh, I think you've... 
I think of putting that together and yeah. make it work. <laughs> yeah, cool. <laughs> yeah. We'll see it on your bookshelf over Skype. Yeah. <laughs> so that's it. Okay, we've completely disrupted uh, everything. Uh, I got I to gotta make sure I take pictures of everything. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so moving along. So what did I do? I um, While I was on the trip, basically the only thing I really uh, accomplished um, is I watched you The Expanse completely. Uh, when I got home, that was like the last thing that I watched, you know, just to sort of decompress. So, um, no, totally good, good fourth season. Um, yeah, so that is <laughs> fundamentally... I did some Minecrafting a little bit here and there this week, but most of the time I've been working, so uh, it's been super brutal for me. Yeah, so um, that's nothing too special for me, but uh, Bryce, what about you? What, uh, what's um, been going on? I watched more Land of Lustrous. This is the gem girl, or gem entity, because <laughs> uh, you know, they look like girls, but they're not really, there's no gender to them necessarily. Um show about i guess they sort of they live in this world and they're basically you know to take part in school but they don't actually do classes but each has a role you know some are protecting the people or protecting them one's making their weapons and stuff like that and these lunarians from the moon come in and like basically want to harvest them for their gems to make jewelry and we have i'll say on episode eight they have yet to show anything about the lunarians beyond them showing up to like cause trouble (laughs) yeah but still, I, you know, I think that I, when I first watched this, I didn't. You said you had more. You didn't come away positive on it, Paul. But I remember coming away like more neutral than anything okay. else. Like I didn't dislike what I saw, and it really, honestly, I was just looking through Amazon for stuff to watch. Sure. Um, I was looking through Vinland Saga, and like you might like Land of the Lustrous, and like a nearly five star rating, which I know is never, a, you know, an instant like, oh, that must hmm. be great. But I was like, well, you know, I'll give it a try, and yeah, I'm sticking with it. I'll probably finish it for sure, and we'll do it as a topic in 2020 because. We kind of, anything we watch all the way through, we kind of are obligated to do as a topic because we do topics all the time. Right, sure. So, but yeah, it's 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 cool so far. It's you know, it can be a little. It's weird because like it's not that dark, but it kind of is because like because these um, entities can be you know shattered, decapitated, or you know have their limbs lopped off. It's not really violent because they're just gems. So there's like little, like you just see the gems inside them. That it's like you know it's you know, it broke open a rock or something, and they can be put back together. But still, like the imagery still kind of evokes that. So it's kind of interesting, I guess. I don't know. In conflict with each other, because like, well, that seems really messed up. That girl's got her head cut off, but oh wait, we can attach it back on. It's not a big deal. Hmm. Which in some ways makes the stakes seem kind of low for the fights, where it's like, well, who cares? If you got your head cut off <laughs> as long as we kill the enemy. But they will take people away. To the Lunarians will take them away, which is kind of, I guess, the ultimate fate of, you know, that's the last thing you want to have happen. Uh, but I am told, they in the first episode, they made it seem like they could get them back if they could figure a way to save them. Like, they're not huh. dead. So, it's interesting. I think it's cool. They, um, they kind of are focusing on, I think, the I would say the biggest weakness of the show might be the main character, Foss, which is, like, she's sort of a... Um, She's not very good at anything, um, but she's not super... Like, in a way, like, I guess in Little Witch Academia, like Akko, you know, she's mm-hmm. not very good at what she does. <laughs> she's not a very good witch at first. Yeah. But she's still kind of endearing. Like, you kind of want, like, you want, you want to see her succeed, blah, blah, blah. I don't get that same feeling with the main character of Land of the Lustrous, which I think is a negative, because I'm sort of like, okay, whatever, you kind of are just a... You have no... You're just kind of a useless <laughs> entity to this whole system, because you don't have anything to do. You're not mm. strong enough to fight. You're not smart enough to make, you know, make weapons. You're not able to put people back together. But at the same time, she sure comes around and they kind of power up in cool ways. Um, so. so do you hear a uh, sort of a Madoka echo in this one or is it? People are saying that. I'm not getting it that. Um, well, I think compared to Madoka might be also putting it way too high expectations. Yeah, <laughs> I don't sure, think it's going to sure. be that good. Um, and I don't think it will get there, but it's, I can still see some similarities, but mm-hmm. once again, I say it's not a must see for me at least right now. But if you're like looking for something yeah. on Amazon, it's not. It's a fun, fun look. And not only enough, I think for the first time in a while or ever, I think the CG actually kind of works for it because of the way they look. They have like their hair is like kind of a glassy like look of a gem, and it doesn't really flow like hair does. And gotcha. It works out well. I guess if you want to go check out Ruby, which is that other one, that's all CG, Ruby. right? That's the one made by Rooster Teeth. It's not actually an anime. But oh, like right, a, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. That, I guess I get a remind. Or Y-B-Y yeah. or something like that. Oh, right, right, right. From yeah. what I saw of that, it seems like it's kind of going for a similar thing. Sort of Interesting. Like, you know, as, you know, fast-paced action with a CG look to it. Uh, but So any uh, sort of romance elements? Or no, no, no. There's no just straight up. They're, yeah. all, they're all, I guess, quote-unquote female, but they're, you know. Got it. They're just, you know. <laughs> they're just gem people they don't really have they're not they, they don't reproduce like the way they're formed you find out later on but it's nothing like you would it's how like a gem is formed basically you know right through you know thousands and thousands of years because they're all thousands of years old you find out too 
And there's this one guy who's like the sensei, who's like sort of like the one who's like kind of created all of them. And he sort of is this like father figure to all of them. Um, but at first I thought they were going to go down a route of like, oh, he's got, you know, malicious intent, but it hasn't gone there yet. So I don't okay. know, but we'll gotcha. see. Um, so figuring out who the Lunarians actually are would be interesting as well. At one point, one character mentioned the, mentioned the idea of humans. I won't say why. And he, the sensei got really like freaked out by this. So I don't know if this is actually taking place on Earth, but we'll, I guess we'll see. I won't spoil it if I figure it out. Um, other anime, I've been to watch. I've been meaning to watch more Vinland Saga. I haven't got around to it. Um, episode fourteen, I think. So, gotcha. I'll jump in for more. I feel like I read something this week, and this is drawing a blank. So I guess I won't talk about that. <laughs> I, uh, for um, Christmas, Annalise got me uh, these two books called the SNES Omnibuses, which is like. Mm. There's these two encyclopedias of the of, of 350 games each for the SNES, a Super Nintendo. Um, and one, the first one's A through M, the next one's N through Z, and it's really nice. I haven't gotten too deep into it yet, but they really cover extensively all the games that really come out on the SNES. I think original games, and yeah, it, it looks really cool. It's like a, a whole page is dedicated to each game, and they have like box art and other stuff about it. So they have like historical stuff, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, as well as nice. like they also have like bring in like quotes from like game publications at the time and what they had to say about it at the time as well. Like in a separate section of each one of them, if there was relevant things to say, and then sometimes he gives his own opinion um, in like another box. So it's it's cool. You know, ever I only I think too far into the A's, but you know, Aerial Monsters. I used to play that game. It's pretty. For Super Nintendo, yeah, it wasn't very good, but it was not cool. Yeah. See, it's cool. He's extensively covering this, and uh, yeah, I'll check it out. I guess he did. He did an NS, NES one previously, but my retro game wheelhouse is kind of SNES going forward. I wasn't a big NES guy. I just didn't really ever have one. So, mm. and that's interesting because SNES was about the time that I stopped having any contact with the uh, console world. Gotcha. I mean, I never owned a console until yeah. I think the 360 was the first one I actually owned. Okay. So I was all in on like the home computer market before, yeah. and then the PCs after that. Which is funny because like I, growing up, I know people have a nostalgia for like the original Doom and Wolfenstein, stuff like that. Yeah. I, I, as somebody who did not have a PC growing up to play games on, I don't know anything about those games in a lot of right, ways. Like, right. I respect them, but it's not. I don't really have a lot of experience with those mm. classic PC games that sort of... So ha- have you dipped into any of the recent sort of uh, remakes of games from that period? You know, things like Dusk? Dusk? A Dusk, yeah. Oh, that's so it's like a sort of a Quake-styled uh, shooter. Is it it's like the graphically like that? It's very much okay, graphically okay. No, like I haven't done that. that. I think you mean more like the, the new Doom that's like sort of a reboot of the... Uh, yeah, that's right? that's very much a modern sensibility. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is more sort of... Oh. This is sort of like a pixel art sort no, of... No, I should probably, though. I mean, I love this. I love playing like well-made, like retro-looking pixel art games like Shovel Knight, yeah. so I should... Well, okay. so, so this is different. I mean, the thing that really gets lost in a lot of the modern games is just the sheer speed of, yes, yeah, of, sure. of Doom. I mean, the, the characters move just so unrealistically fast, yeah. and it's so much about mobility. It's about dodging in a way that's really lost in a lot of the modern ones. Mm-hmm. And um, Well, even like the, the polygonal games, like Quake and stuff like that, like the polygonal Quake, weren't they super fast or Unreal Tournament? Like, are those considered like yeah. extremely fast games as well? Yeah, like, exactly. Those are multiplayer so, games. So, I mean, the them. big shift with Quake was when it, they made the shift to true 3D graphics mm-hmm. from sprites, yeah. and it got a lot more computationally expensive. Right, I mean, yeah. this is you know barely the beginning of gpus um <laughs> but i feel like i look at videos of those games like it's still just as fast like it's constantly you know right. you need a mouse and keyboard there's no way you could keep up with it <laughs> but what you did have is a lot fewer enemies True. around yeah. so i mean doom is just about masses upon masses right, of enemies yeah, yeah. that's cool um and i and it's hard to find a modern game that feels the same way while still feeling fair yeah yeah so See, those um those new Serious Sam games they did at one point years back. I oh, thought. so Serious Sam 1 I played an awful lot okay. of. And that, it, that actually did have that feel to a certain yeah, that, extent. Yeah, the, the, the remakes they did or the reboots they did mm-hmm. of those guys, yeah. Yeah, but that was like amping it up all uh, up to yeah. 11 and just like, you know, yeah. hundreds of you know, screaming headless you know, guys, guys with bombs, with bombs on their yeah, hands running at you. <laughs> um, yeah, I haven't played – I'm looking at Dusk now. Uh, I've seen this played. I've not played it myself. Gotcha. But, um, yeah. I'm not opposed to it. It's just an era um, that I just really don't know a lot about, so it's kind of always been a weird mystery, furious people. Right, <laughs> yeah. Um, other than that, I put more Indivisible. Um, I was talking about this with Paul, and oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I got hit, I hit a, like, a really weird difficulty spike, but it wasn't so much a difficulty spike in the traditional sense. It was like the game kind of decided to start changing the way it played in a way that it's not it's not playing to its strengths. Like, I love the combat. I think it's very good, and I've gotten very good at it, and I uh-huh. think that it's... It flows really well, but it's, it was this boss where you, t- you know, you know, most bosses in these games have like multiple forms. So he had three forms, right? So I beat him the first time, but then he like when you take out his first form, he like sort of blows you away and runs away, and <laughs> you have to follow him. 
you know, in the actual like retrovania style with right. platforming and stuff. And it's like they, they put in this hard, hard platforming, or at least felt very like just the game's not really equipped to be a tight platformer the way a Mario or, or a Metroid would be. Yeah. So it's not playing to its strength. And it just like, it just was driving me crazy because if you lose on any of those platforming segments, you go back to the whole beginning of the whole damn thing. Hmm. So even though I've gotten really good at taking them out in the, in the RPG um, you know, battles, I was just getting mad. Uh, like, in, in a way that I had not gotten mad in a game in a while. <laughs> Interesting. Usually I don't let it like get to me. Like, okay, whatever. But this one, maybe because I like it otherwise, it was really frustrating me that we make a choice like that. So I put it down, went to work, and then I came back out. I'd give it one more try, and I beat it first try. Like, okay, whatever. <laughs> so I don't know. <laughs> it's one of those things where I think subconsciously maybe I was like solving it in my head, and then I sat down with the fresh eyes. And, right, yeah. You know, but yeah. still, it's not, I'm not forgiving it for that, though. It shouldn't have those segments in there. And if they want to have those segments in there so badly, put some checkpoints in. <laughs> for yeah, sure. Yeah, slide. <laughs> um, for sure. Especially if you're not going to let you save whenever you want, like a quick save. So I'm totally with you. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think I've ranted about yeah. bosses more than once here. Yeah, so... Uh, so, is there much story to it? I mean, I know I was, yeah. I was watching, like, a, one of the first 15-minute videos, and there were an awful lot of sort of cutscene, click-click, yeah. back-and-forth talking. It is, yeah. It moves a little fast. So, you end up... So, you're in this village, and you're kind of this daughter of the chief, and, you know, you're kind of a rebel type of daughter. Doesn't want to listen to his teachings, blah, blah, blah. This empire attacks the village because they're saying they are... I don't know. I think the word it is. What's the word? Oh, I can't remember. <laughs> I lost the word, but anyway. Basically, they're... We need to take out the... Um, I don't know. But anyway, so they just attack the village and they take out everybody, um, including your father. You're away at the time up in a hill and you see it all happen. And you run down, you fight this soldier who's like a commander in the army, the one that killed your father, and you fight him. And then what happens is really strange. Then he gets sucked into your head. And this is how the indivisible part is. You're hmm. sucking every enemy or every enemy, every ally you're going to encounter into your head. And you have like an inner realm you can enter and like talk to them. But overall, you're just running around as the main girl, which I guess is maybe their way to say, like, hey, we're not going to animate all these characters following you around. So we're right. just going to put them in your head, uh, which is fine. Uh, but, like, she kind of forgives him, this commander guy, uh, a little too, I think his name was Dar, a little too quickly in my mind. Like, he just killed your father in front of you. And, like, within, like, within, like, a few minutes of gameplay, like, you're kind of already, like, kind of like, oh, yeah, he sucks. I don't like him, but we're stuck right. with him, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, this seems like you're taking it too lightheartedly for the murder of your father. Um, and they sort of go into how, like, he realized, he, like, you know, feels, as time went on, he found the person, the, the Empire, the, the main leader of the Empire is going to become the main enemy, is obviously very corrupt, and he sort of realizes, like, oh, well, what have I been doing? I've been an idiot. You know, he found me on the streets and raised me, but, you know, into his army, but what was I thinking, blah, blah, blah. But it still feels a little weird, just in some ways. It just feels like it moved too fast. Right. Um, maybe if he, like, wasn't the actual one that killed your father, maybe it'd be a little more, like, just who was happened to be there <laughs> i could see it maybe but it's just it's weird hmm. um but that's kind of it uh, as far as like my problems with the story um i think the main character's voice acting isn't great uh, everybody else is good though um and they all have kind of funny quips like as you're talking to people they'll like pop up in your head like to say something about what that other person just said and yeah it's a lot of characters so far though and i'm afraid like a few of them are being completely sort of like whatever you're just there to fill out the party hmm. um like just like two characters like that but they are also there are also some optional characters you don't necessarily have to uh recruit i was reading so maybe those are those characters that where it's just sort of like we can't really account for the story having these characters there so we kind of have to marginalize them pretty heavily right which you know hey uh, but i think it's good it's well animated uh, i definitely get like the idea that these guys made a fighting game first because and not to say that you have to put in complicated inputs but like it's kind of like a juggling thing so you want to like hit enemy up and have another character run in and do their move to keep <coughs> them juggled and then you know so these enemies pull up defenses, you want to attack high and then low, and then a main attack to, like, break their defenses. So is it basically a fighting one-on-one type of thing, or is it more of a brawler where you've got a number of enemies in the screen to manage at once? You have four characters each mapped to one button on your your uh, controller. So, mm-hmm. like, top, middle, or top, mm-hmm. left, right, and bottom. And then they attack, and then on the other side is the enemies. And sword turn basically, like, it's like an active time battle. So, like, those moves you can, you can do th- three moves a turn, basically, and those will replenish over time. Yeah. So it's not a brawler. It's sort of like two groups of each other. It, it really feels more like a Final Fantasy with an active time battle system. But oh, it's a little more interesting. But there's a little more um, timing based. It, you know, there's more timing to the combat for an RPG. So like I said, you would like sort of hit an enemy up. You know your you know each character's moves. You sort of hit one up. You know by pressing up and attack as opposed to just regular mm-hmm. attack. And then someone come in and like smash them to the ground and you sort of build up combos that way. So sort of a King of Fighters almost where you're yeah. trying where you're switching people in and out. Yeah, kind of. Um, but uh, it's not like complicated like a fighting game. Like you don't gotcha. have to put in quarter circles or anything. Like if you if you're if you don't if you don't like fighting games, you're not good at them. I wouldn't say don't play this. It's just a matter of it's more about timing. It's one button press to do an attack. So okay, cool. 
It's cool, though. Uh, I think it's... I'm going to finish it up, probably. Unless, even if I hit another difficulty spike, maybe I'll just be able to power through again. But that's, my, that's my biggest complaint. So uh, reading online, that's apparently the most difficult. That is a spike that everyone notes, and it's not so bad the rest of the game. So Okay, so you're over the over Yeah, hopefully. The yeah. They said the final boss can be very difficult, but he's the final boss. Like, yeah, at that point, <laughs> it's fine, like yeah. Yeah, you've seen most of the game anyway. <laughs> yeah, but this mid-boss is just like a... <laughs> yeah, I, 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 mean, I think that's a, those boss gates are really difficult to deal with from a game design perspective, particularly if you've got a linear game. Yeah. I mean, uh, like Hollow Knight's one of those where right, yeah. you have super tough bosses bosses and i love the world i love exploring i actually love the combat uh but some of those bosses are just so punishing yeah i go back and forth on sometimes um it really depends on how much to make you replay to take the boss on again for me and yeah this is an example where they did a really bad job with that um <laughs> right. indivisible I mean, if Hollow Knight had a checkpoint right before the boss, I'd probably be okay with that, trying it over and over again. But yeah, well, like it's it's like you have to go. In the one I'm stuck on, you have to go like two screens, yeah, yeah. and you also aren't at full power, right? right. So yeah. if you get knocked down to sort of a sub power level, so oh, if you, you, if you mess you up once, once okay. yeah, you know, then you're at a, a big disadvantage for any subsequent mm-hmm. fights. And there's no there's no grinding aspect of Hollow Knight. There's no experience points, or is there? Um, not you sort of have limited numbers you can collect in each okay, area. Okay, it's not like you can recall. farm enemies and get more str- they yeah. Get stronger. Okay, yeah. Um, um, yeah, I mean you can do that to a certain extent, but but um, there's only so many items that are mm-hmm. unlocked in each area. So okay. after a certain point, you can uh, sort of um, do a little bit of grinding to get your power maxed mm-hmm. out before the fight, okay. which lets you have more special moves. Okay. Uh, but again, that's super annoying because then you have to do like you know ten minutes of that yeah. before you go and immediately get stomped by the boss. Yeah, at least with this, they they let you uh, they, when they reset me, they'll reset you where you were when you actually saved at the time. So it's yeah. not like you had to re gain all that life back but so i'll check it out i got it for 20 bucks on ps4 so ah, nice not, not a bad deal yeah. for sure that's it for me cool uh so what about for me i haven't watched much anime in the past week there are there's a bunch of stuff i'm not like three weeks behind mm-hmm. on all the current season stuff right. so i need to man i can't believe the season's over already yeah, i can't right. believe this year is over already yeah. you know the decade is over oh uh-huh. man I, I i'm okay with the decade being over but the year not so much you know mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, um, so I guess what I was watching is some old Sylvester Stallone movies, mm. <laughs> and I'm not sure what uh, possessed me, but that was just kind of the mood I was in. Uh, so I watched uh, Cliffhanger, okay, uh, which is uh, a kind of an odd one from that perspective. Mm-hmm. He's like a, a rescue ranger with a troubled past. Um, gotcha. I assume to save people from. They're in, in need. Yeah, well, that's mountains, the idea. But, <laughs> but then there's, uh, you know, the usual sort of team of Euro baddies who mm-hmm. are going to hijack a uh, hijack a, a, a treasury flight filled mm-hmm. with, you know, thousand dollar bills or something okay. like that. And they mm-hmm. something goes amiss and they end up scattered all over the mountainside. Okay. So a lot of mm-hmm. sort of free climbing scenes and a lot of Okay. G- graphic violence in that in late '80s, early '90s sort of way. Okay, uh, but uh, but a, a decent watch, I'd say. Yeah. I'd say that one. How are you watching on the DVD or? Is yeah, there? DVD. Okay. Yeah. I know they're streaming somewhere. I could see that being something you could just <laughs> yeah <laughs> on Amazon potentially. Uh, they they could be. I mean, this is the problem. I mean, we we were promised that every movie would be digitally yeah. accessible. Yeah. That is a dream that has not come yeah, out. Yeah. No, it's true. Um, true. At least not officially. Maybe. Yeah, well, <laughs> no, there true. is that. Yes. <laughs> Uh, so I also rewatched Demolition Man, okay. which is an absolute stone classic. That's the one where he goes, he gets frozen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. along with uh, Wesley one. Snipes. Yeah. I saw that one when I was probably way too young to see it. I remember <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> it was like, this is awesome, it's so violent. <laughs> yeah, it's it's pretty violent. But it it's violent. so I, I mean, one of that? my sort of things I always say is that psychopaths are not interesting to watch as villains. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Wesley Snipes is a psychopath, and he is just super fun to watch. <laughs> I mean, he is just so out of control. And he's just clearly having a grand old time. Um, and he's and the way he's sort of is surprised at things that happen makes it sort of gives it a good rhythm mm-hmm. but, but you know he's more than happy to just shoot somebody in the face <laughs> i'm trying to remember that movie i do love i love the scenes where like they're trying to apprehend him at first and like they're not used to criminals that would actually fight back because of the way society has become yeah. <laughs> so he's actually gonna like say no i'm not gonna get down the ground and put my hands behind my back <laughs> like yeah. so they're like going through a guy if the, if the culprit refuses to put their hands behind their back like stuff like that would have been pretty funny yeah i don't and, i don't i don't think i remember yeah, it it that one's definitely worth revisiting. I mean, of the three mm-hmm. I, I I watched, that I think is probably the one mm-hmm. that's uh, yeah. sort of wormed its way into you know popular culture. 
Uh, and the, the third is Cobra, which oh, God. which is <laughs> just I mean that is sort of like the distilled essence of 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 B movie. And it's like eating a polar bear's liver because there's which has like so much vitamin A it'll kill you. This is so much B movie, it's just mm. almost more than you can take. Uh but once again, it's just over the top. Um, you know, Sylvester Stallone and the movie makers are taking themselves so damned seriously. <laughs> and it is just yeah. utterly ludicrous. Um but pure it's nineteen eighty six, pure eighties action. Um yeah. Don't do the calculation to realize how long ago. <laughs> no, that no, was. no, no. Just the same the year. Apparently it was a very, just, a, very, just uh, a year. Apparently yeah. it was a critical failure, but a financial success. So yeah. I guess leave it that. that that's a, that's that's sort of the classic action movie yeah. for you. People do not like it and on paper, but they still watch it behind the yeah, like Transformers yeah. Two of its day, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Michael yeah. Bay's Transformers Two. Right, right. Yeah. And I guess the other thing to mention then on the gaming front is the Steam sale has yeah. started. And once again, I have failed to resist the charms of the Steam sale, <laughs> mm-hmm. I, uh, despite the length of my backlog. But the, the big uh, one I picked up is Red Dead Redemption 2. Yeah. I uh, I went in there the other day, and I was like, uh, mm, no, no. no. Yep. And I was looking at stuff to buy, and I was like, no, <laughs> no, 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 don't do that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but but Red Dead Redemption 2 came out a while back on the Epic Store, and apparently mm-hmm. it's been out on um, on Steam for a couple weeks now. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, I know it. It had a lot of artifacts, at least the original game, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, You're, it it's um apparently had a lot of technical problems on release, right, for which sure. is part of its lore to most people. Hmm. So uh, I've got to say, it's a beautiful game. I did have to step down my. Um, my graphic settings or the graphic settings of the game a fair amount because my video card is definitely showing its age a bit. Oh, really? So it's uh, probably within the next year or two about time to start doing something about that. Mm -hmm. Uh, But once I got it tuned correctly and stopped the horrible strobing, Mm -hmm. uh, that was a good thing I wasn't epileptic, I'll tell you that. It was, uh, but um, the the scenery is beautiful, starts off in snowstorms, um, yeah, I, I don't know. The the controls are a little weird. Um, it doesn't feel sort of as smooth and easy to get around. It has, you know, it reminded me a bit of the start of Metal Gear Solid V, The Phantom Pain. Okay. There's like this really long sequence where you're in a hospital. Yeah. And you are just trudging for like 15 minutes at dirt slow speed, staring at this guy's behind hanging out of a hospital gown. Yeah. And it's just, you know, sort of this punishing sort of time wasting yeah. experience. This had that same sort of pacing feel to it. But but they're in the snow. I've played the opening of this game. They're in the snow, right? They're yeah, trying to get exactly. away from the Pinkertons. That's the point. Yeah. And and it's. I mean, it's nice. I mean, I played through the first couple missions, uh, but but you, there's no way to speed things up. There's no way to move faster. And I mean, for the moment, I'm okay with that. I'm just not sure how that's going to feel over time. And it's a little weird getting adapted to the shooting. So like in Red, the first Red Dead Redemption, I mean, shooting is a big part, obviously. Mm-hmm. And it felt very natural to just like whip out your gun, snap to it. It does not feel as natural. So maybe that will. Uh, uh, improve as I get used to these changed controls. Hmm. Uh, but nonetheless, um, it's a I'll, big file, right? It's like 100, a, you said 120 oh, gigs or something. It is yeah. bloody gigantic. I had to wipe a bunch of stuff off my hard drive. There's an extra, yeah, I got it from PS4. There's an extra disc. I'm just loading and you got to load first and then put in the disc you're going to yeah. play with. Yeah, yeah so that's about right. Yeah, I think it was 126 or something yeah. like that. It was just Wild. crazy. Yeah. Hmm. So. Uh, but we'll see how long it takes of 126 yeah. gigs of hard drive space. Yeah. <laughs> we will. Um, That's uh, it's quite a bit, actually, for just a game. A game, yeah. Well, I thought about uh, getting, what, Anno 1800-something, oh, whatever yeah. it is. Yeah. Yeah. But then I realized oh, I'd have to download Uplay or some crap uh, like that. And yeah. I just kind of like, I don't want yep. to do that. Hades uh, on Steam now, though. The what? Super Giant game, Hades. Hades. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. right. You mentioned and that. guess what? You, if you get it, it's on sale for 20% off. You buy it, you get a free copy of Pyre. Think about ah, it. Ah, <laughs> nice. I already have those games, so I'm not going to do it. But <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I haven't played Pyre yet, but that yeah. might be a good uh, motivation. So it's still. So I was I was surprised that it jumped over to Steam while it was still on, on yeah, early I, access. I, yeah, I was under the impression, too, that it would be out of early access when it finally got to Steam, but yeah. okay, apparently that wasn't the case. Well, I'm, I'm not going to complain, so I yeah. guess it was one of these time. How was, um, how was like, because I know there was quite a bit this year alone where people are trying to get rid of not not deploying their games on Steam 
how is that going on with uh, with Epic and Riot or whatever it is? So, so the yeah, the Epic Store is the sort of has stuck a stake in the ground. They are going to break the back of Steam, and they right. have been doing that by trying to sign as many exclusive as possible. Yeah, and they've, got, the and they've possible, had some big think, ones. Yeah, yeah. And uh, there's a lot of fans have been resentful of this. But on the other hand, like the Borderlands 3 launch mm-hmm. was hugely successful. And that was yeah. epic only. I mean, I did not buy Borderlands 3 because it was epic only. And I don't want to reward this sort of artificial scarcity. Model. Right. I do, I do take advantage of the free games sometimes, though. Yeah. Like, like, for a week, it's like Into the Breach is free. It's like, okay, I guess I'll grab that because maybe I'll play Into the Breach. <laughs> you should play Into the Breach. I will, yeah, yeah, into yeah. the Breach is free. Even though awesome. I didn't pay for it. So I, you know. yeah. <laughs> yeah, Actually, I, I got to say, Into the Breach is a perfect Switch game. Oh yeah, I bet. Yeah, I should probably get on Switch. That's kind of where I really want it. Actually. What is Into the Breach? It's a tactical turn-based game about mechs against kaiju, made by the people who made FTL. Okay. Yeah. So it, yeah. it, it, it's it's really good. I talked about it a lot when I was playing it. I guess maybe back the start of the year. Uh, so it's mm. played under this sort of very small. I think it's almost like an eight by eight or ten by ten grid, maybe twelve by twelve. But it's a very small sort of deliberate game. Uh, mm. You've got okay. a team of three mechs, and you have to survive a certain number of rounds against these yeah kaiju like enemies. It's kind of roguelike in that way. Yeah. Mm. yeah okay. you, you get. Um, uh, random um, sort of upgrades to your mix um, and your pilots. The the uh, sort of conceit is that you are fighting across all these different timelines. Uh, so you can every so often, you can once a battle like jump back in time to undo a turn that did not go well. Mm-hmm. Um, or you can just abandon and you can pick one pilot to go into the next timeline. Mm, okay. Yeah. So very specific rim in the way they're like it's like a you know kaiju versus right okay I got you yeah yeah Uh, in that way yeah I I was a little dubious when I started playing it but I just fell in love with that game I mean it's just like the it's sort of these perfect little puzzles it's you have to think deeply about all your options to maximize each turn but since you don't have to think past each turn you aren't really punished for bad mistakes so it's sort of great from that sort of engagement perspective. So again, on the switch, it's great for you know picking up, playing a battle, and then putting it back down for a little bit. Okay, yeah, yeah. So you don't need a lot of commitment. To it. And you start off with a single team of three mechs, and then after you beat the game with them once, you can unlock another one, and you get up to the end point where you can you know basically get a random group or mm. select your okay. own dream team of mechs. Got you. Okay. Yeah. So I don't know the, the Epic Store. I think that. They're kind of. I, I'm okay with competition in Steam, but they're going about in the worst possible way. It feels like you know they should just create a better service, and that should be their you know their driving force. Like, hey, it's better to play games on here, not that we have the games we're not letting yeah. on Steam here, <laughs> right? Uh, so, yeah. But you know they got a lot of Fortnite money; they can throw that around and get some excuses yep. for sure. So, <laughs> and they also have Fortnite, which helps too. <laughs> but yeah. well, uh, with the kids, I, I guess. I haven't heard yeah. as much. Uh craziness for it for the end of this year is yeah, comparably but I, I like earlier. Makes, I, you haven't heard that about Minecraft either. I bet something's billions of dollars. You don't hear about the Pokemon anymore, yeah. but something's well, billions of dollars. Well, like, I wouldn't have thought much silently, about it. They're, they're silently incredibly successful. The, yeah. these in, things, the, yeah. in the 2019 YouTube Rewind, they highlighted Minecraft was the most like you know yeah. watched. Because streamer, because like a big streamer was like doing it right. It wasn't who was doing it? It wasn't PewDiePie, was it? Ugh. Not, I don't know. Somebody um, brought Minecraft to the forefront. I was reading that, like, because one hmm. really popular streamer, like, went all in on Minecraft for a oh, while. Really? And I guess that helped it a lot. I know that, uh, like, John watches Captain Sparkles a lot. Mm-hmm. So he's apparently pretty big in terms of Minecraft mm-hmm. uh, streamers. But, yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't really know. It's not a thing that I do. I just play it. Yeah. So. But I'm just saying, like, just because you don't hear a lot about Fortnite doesn't mean it's not making a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Know, we're just not really. I was just hearing about it from yeah. everybody, and then that sort of faded away. Yeah, sure. Yeah, that's, towards that's the end of yeah. this, you yeah. know, end of this last year or this year, really, not last year, whatever. Yeah. End of the year, end of the decade, mm-hmm. man. Yeah. <laughs> Remember Fortnite came out? It was just like a paid thing. You played for like a survival wave based horde mode, and then they were like, "Oh, we'll try to battle royale," and then it became a big. <laughs> that's when it became its big yeah. hit. It's kind of. Yeah. It's so strange. Uh, this, this is after PUBG, so PUBG kind of was the one that brought it, I guess, mostly to the the popular uh, popularity that type of game gets. Yeah. You're playing this, Paul? You're not a big online gamer, actually. For no, I, I, I hate people. Yeah, that's fair. You know, I mean... Uh, uh, I do, too. I mean, I, if anybody talks ever when I'm playing a shooter, I immediately silent them. Like, nope, nope. <laughs> I don't care what you say. I, yeah. I, I would actually love to play games with people, but, yeah. but it would have to be people I know, you know? Uh, yeah, it's right. just yeah uh, I think I think that is exactly the problem that I have. Uh, it's the same problem, is that when I did, uh, like, Battlegrounds stuff, um, you know, the Star Wars, basically, you know, first-person shooters... 
um, when I did all that stuff, I get on and I play with people, and it would be like hit or miss, right? Yeah. Or you get the heavy breather or something. And it's just like, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, and or people are just intentionally being, you know, vicious and gross. So I was just like, yeah, I don't. That's why I never did a lot of online gaming. So yeah. for me. Yeah, I never, I like playing online games, but I'm not, I, never, I couldn't find a Battle Royale game for me. I tried a bunch of them. I've tried Apex, I tried PUBG, I tried the Call of Duty uh, Blackout Mode, which is their mm. version. And while I do like Call of Duty competitive, like regular deathmatch play, I I just couldn't get into. I just can't get into a battle royale game, and I really wanted to. I just couldn't do it. And mm. The closest I got was Apex Legends because I really like Titanfall too, and it kind of plays like that. But mm. just didn't get me. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. Any else, Paul? You do it. Nope, that's it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's plenty. Um, so I guess we got our topic this week. Yeah. <laughs> we oh. have a topic, surprisingly. Oh, that's a topic, all right. right. What was uh, it? Let's get the name right again. Where's the intro? Uh, it's over there. All right. yeah. I think it's like Techno Size? Techno Ties. Techno Ties, yes. Colon Edit and I. Yeah. This is a Serbian animated feature that I guess From I have to. 2009. Talk. Yeah, I forgot the wiki board. Is so it's a movie. Yeah. Um. <laughs> The most polite way to say is it's, is is it's interesting. It is interesting. I guess the best way to it's say it's definitely it, interesting. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it's not something. It's not the. I mean, the the interesting, uh, an, the perspectives are not what you expect. Yeah. Um, the animation is idiosyncratic, to yeah. say the least. Yeah, this whole thing about how they have sort of realistic static scenes with the very more cartoonish looking characters. It sort of looked a little like Archer at times, which I, I don't know if that's a good thing well, or a bad thing. But... I, I think like in terms of the animation where it's like this flash and you can see it's like someone with a popsicle stick is like moving a character around. Yeah. That's kind of how the the fluid nature of, of the thing is. But the art is better than something like Archer. Archer's yeah. intentionally, you know, very two dimensional. Um, even though they don't move in a two dimensional manner. Um so so yeah, it stars this uh, girl named Edit. It takes place in twenty seventy four, and she's a psychology student who can't pass her university exams to, I guess, you know, get her her PhD. So she decides to visit a dealer on the black market to install a chip into her that will allow her to mem- remember everything she ever sees and be able to recall it, and then so she can pass the exam because that'd be very easy to pass an exam. I bet if you remember everything yeah. you saw. <laughs> Um, I say this is a very like sort of like sort of uh, cyberpunky maybe I don't know they have like drugs and like you know everyone's sort of taking drugs like <laughs> you know at clubs and in a way that like it's kind of futuristic in a way. I yeah, know. Alan made a ghost in the shell yeah. comment. Uh, yeah, and but I, it's definitely sort of along that line. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, I would say let's not compare it to Ghost in the Shell because that's not fair. No, 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 not, <laughs> but at all. not at all. As far as like quality is concerned, yeah. but <laughs> to Ghost in the Shell that is yeah. not fair yeah. to Ghost in the Shell. Um, but she also works for a scientific and social research company. And where she's sort of like been sort of tasked with like sort of I guess hearing out um, this this boy named um, Abel or man named Abel who's an autistic math genius. And I guess his thing he discovered the formula of the universe that connects everything and solves all the questions about life and meaning in life. Hmm. And after that, he kind of became super disinterested in the world and sort of just like doesn't want to really engage with anyone anymore. I guess maybe because he's like, well, I figured it out. What else is there? <laughs> it's kind yeah. of the um, explanation they give. And they sort of have her talk to him and try to get him to sort of open up. Uh, they don't really go too far into that aspect, though. In fact, he's probably very underplayed in a way that I was surprised by towards because he sort of introduces he was going to be like the big thing of the story. But no, it ends up Edit sees the equation. And the equation has been known to was it was it with machines like when we make machines shut down or like yeah so they basically become um, sentient and then immediately shut down. But the chip in her head. Uh, it's activated in a completely different way. It doesn't shut down. Um, because it starts I, they're saying sort because of enabling... Conne- yeah, because it's connected to edit. So then once have, it sees the equation, but then also wants it to survive. Yeah. And then begins to grow. And I guess sort of, um, you know, she, she starts having this huge craving for iron pills because the machine needs it. And also that um, inside her, it's sort of growing its own nervous system throughout her body. And also, he's, he, you know, he's, or the machine is giving her a, like, you know, a dose of endorphins every time she takes one, an iron pill. So it's like, that's mm-hmm. why she's, like, sort of always craving them because she's getting, you know, a, reward, a psychological reward for each one she right, takes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then she sort of, and then it's sort of, she starts to see what well, she thinks is hallucinations, but it's actually the machine sort of, um, you know, personifying itself into her vision as this human, this older man. And, 
Yeah, and then there's a, there's a whole evil corporation that wants to use her for you know they claim it's for the good of everybody. What's the, what's the sacrifice of one one woman when we can save all these people from you know future yeah. catastrophes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Very like evil, like or not evil, but you know what I mean. Like ends justify the means, like guy. In reality, I get the I get the impression they want to use it for money though. I, this is the way I got from the bad guys. It didn't come off as very like uh, righteous in a way that I think they their claw their cause they were to start champion. Mm-hmm. And so it goes from there. So because she's connected to this um, machine, like, they can take control of her body. And so she sort of is able to, you know, without having ever trained in martial arts, like, take down all these guys that are trying to, you know, capture her. And so she goes on the run, and it, it kind of spirals out of control from there. And and 90 then, minutes later, yeah. it, it, it wraps up yeah. and ends. Yeah, it wraps up way too cleanly, I think. Yeah, but, I, w- I would uh, definitely agree with that. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm not going to I'm not gonna fall off her overstay and it's welcome, but... It maybe could have used a little. I don't know what it needed. It, it, it was way too hard of an, a, a positive ending. I felt like the way the direction they were going, it made seem it was going to end very much in tragedy, and it didn't <laughs> in a way right. that felt unrealistic. Yeah, you know? almost a bait and switch. Yeah, um, yeah, which left, left you sort of with nowhere to go and, right, to, yeah. w- and figure out what to do with what just happened. Yeah, so they sort of have a, a little wrap up where like this what happened to this person, this what happened to that person, da, 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 and then credits. Um, that said, though, I mean, I, I think it has some good moments. Um, did you were you were you here, Paul? Did you see the part where like her boyfriend asked to sit in her grandfather? She's cared for by her grandparents, I believe, not her parents. And the boyfriend is sort of waiting for her to get ready for a date, and he asked the grandfather, "Can I sit in this chair?" And this grandfather goes on this like humongous story about in like kind of a sketchy black and white thing. Al, do you remember? Nope, this I missed. I missed that part. Okay, so he tells, he tells this really really crazy story about like, oh, you know, I was part of the you know the the riots and the revolutionaries, and we took over and we bust in this like you know corrupted congressman's room, and he was just sitting there, and the creature grew out of his head and it jumped around, and the, <laughs> it was this whole ridiculous story that made no, had nothing to do with the main story. And then the boyfriend is sort of like, oh no, I I meant can I sit in this chair? Oh, that's just a beach chair I got from the flea market. Yeah. <laughs> the, okay, <laughs> that was all. Yeah, that there's was. a lot of there's a lot of weird things like like that. So you have the the bear and the rabbit. I keep yeah. mentioning that they're sort of around and they interact, but they come in, they say something, and they go away. Yeah, the, the, they seem out of place. I don't know why they need to be there because they barely use them any at all. Like, yeah. they appear like three times for no real and I story get purpose. If maybe if they're trying to like represent some kind of state of technology and, and these robots are sort of around and you yeah. know give me your social security so i can wait in line for you or yeah, you DMV know like little things like that I, I get that but these are sort of like unnecessary moments that don't tie into any cohesive thread yeah 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 i agree with you on the bear and the, and the rabbit because i you're right like why do they look like a bear and a rabbit unless like they could have said like oh those are her companions when she was a child or something like maybe they've been working this whole time like the rabbit's yeah. kind of malfunctioning mm-hmm. but yeah you why wouldn't they just be you know robot looking robots right <laughs> or or you know utilize them in a way that made sense for them to be animated at all yeah maybe they thought well, no, it, it's definitely barring. It's definitely influenced by anime, so I guess you could say maybe they need to have the mascots in there or something like that to, yeah, to check uh, out that box. Not that they should have, but I can see maybe. But there's lots a lot. of little unnecessary things all over, littered yeah. all over through this. Yeah, I thought the. Uh, I was confused about. I guess they were, they did like some future sport game. Were you there for that all, Paul? Or you missed that part too? No, but I missed that. part, Okay, yeah, they like yeah. it's like a instead of playing paintball, they do like this crazy like race on hoverboards. That's it's not like it's a professional sport. It's like you sort of pay to do it, like you would for a paintball experience or laser tag. <laughs> and that one kind of went on a little long, and I found the rules very confusing. <laughs> did you understand? Um, yeah, so yeah. yeah. I, the, the rules were like I don't remember what they were. It's like it's, you know, it's like there's a open a door here. and the one team member goes through the door and the other one doesn't, and then it's, I don't know. Who yeah. makes the three laps wins? It's yeah. So I thought the technology was kind of cool. Some of the technology, like just like the you know the grandfather holding like a piece a new what little like a newspaper and oh, like yeah, hitting, hitting a switch, on hitting the a side. switch and like new stories come up. Like I think you know stuff like that felt like good touches. I thought throughout. Um, and the, yeah, I, I'm not saying this is a must see by any stretch of the imagination, uh, but I did find it very interesting. I, this is a cool look to it. I just you don't see very often. I couldn't really think of a. Really a good comparison point, honestly. I say, you know, Archer, but that's because, like, some of the characters kind of have that look to them. Yeah, but I mean... Overall, it's like a weird blend of CG and 2D, and it's... Yeah, it has sort of this weird flat shading to try yeah. to get a cell-shaded look, but it doesn't quite work, and yeah. the mouths are over-animated. Yeah, I think that's sure. kind of the weird thing. It's almost like this synchro fox effect where they have the old cartoons the whole... that have, like, a, a, somebody's mouth superimposed over yeah. the cartoon. I, what I can say is it's well-produced, but it's very off-putting. 
Yeah. It's just doesn't matter what it is. It's the animation. It's the look of the characters. It's just sort of the art in general. It's incredibly just off-putting all, all together for me. Yeah. And, you know, it's why well, I gave you guys a tip before. I mean, you decide to watch this. Uh, don't turn you know, on Amazon. Don't turn on the subtitles. They're already baked into the. Yeah, 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 um, yeah, yeah, that true. will just give you closed captioning, which is annoying. Yes, <laughs> it's, seriously. it's like loud thunderclap or stuff like that. So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, maybe it's just the, it, the language is spoken very fast. I, I did at first have trouble keeping up with the subtitles. I don't know. That's a, just a me thing. I don't know. Maybe they speak a little slower in Japanese. I don't know as far as the language itself. But I did for this one. I found it to be kind of an issue that I don't really having watched a lot of things subtitled. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, I got I caught up pretty quick though. Once I started, yeah, really broken thing, but. I I didn't have too much trouble with it. Um, they were big enough, you know. Yeah, pacing uh, was okay. Jokes were good. Some of the jokes mm-hmm. were funny. You know, he's sort of studying with this one guy, and then like all this filthy porn pops up on the screen for a second, <laughs> stuff like that. Um, Actually, I thought the soundtrack was very good, actually. That was the one thing I would say I think is just good, is that the music worked well for the most of the... Now, Paul, you only saw, like, half of it? Yeah, yeah, I saw, like, the second half. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which must have been really confusing. <laughs> yeah, it was definitely hard to sort of... I mean, it was uh, kind of confusing even having watched the first half, <laughs> so... Yeah, it, it, the uh, the the way it was handling its storytelling definitely felt disjointed, and not mm-hmm. just because I didn't know what was going on. Yeah, I mean, it didn't. It was things didn't really follow from moment to moment and scene to scene. No, it didn't. They were just trying to sort of sketch the ideas that are going on in this world, try to make things a little confusing, and I think they succeeded on that front yeah. a little too yeah, well. Yeah, and I think some aspects was like I said, I think Abal the. Uh, sort of the guy who solved the equation. I thought oh, yeah. it was very underused because how important he seemed to be at first. And mm-hmm. I don't know. There's other characters that didn't really seem to have much of a purpose uh, other than like, he's the guy who's going to give her the drugs that she needs in the trip <laughs> yeah. to put, you know, and stuff like yeah. that. So still, I just, it was kind of a fun watch. Like it was just interesting to watch. And I it, think that it was interesting. And if you're looking for something to watch, I think on Amazon, I mean, I wouldn't pay for it necessarily on DVD, but no, maybe, no. you know, uh, yeah, you pay with some prime. It's, we, you could do a lot worse. It is available on Amazon Prime, so we got two links for it uh, to the wiki, oglink.com slash 4P1, and then to Amazon where you can watch it for free if you're an Amazon Prime user, I suppose, Uh, oglink.com slash 4P2. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, this is the only Serbian animated feature I've ever seen, yeah. I think. I don't know of another, <laughs> but there might be more. I can't think of anything. Likewise. I don't know much of animation that's or anything I've ever seen that's come out of Serbia, but, you know. Interesting. I've never no. thought much about it. No, I'm reading a little more about it. Apparently, this is written and directed by a comic book artist who, this is actually a sequel to his to what's called te- Techno Ties his graphic novel apparently which ah, is kind of interesting, interesting which maybe I don't know how related that maybe is maybe that's why they animated it that way maybe yeah, they're trying maybe to this is it. more like a motion graphic instead of like you know animated movie yeah. Yeah. no I have to say that the, the, the some of the animation was pretty well done I mean yeah. this wasn't I mean you look at a lot of like flash animation we were discussing this oh, yeah. while it was going on yeah, this yeah. isn't just cutouts I mean like there's a, there, I commented on this when like the, uh, the main character is like stepping and there's an animation of her foot yeah. and it's moving like a foot right uh, so it the, the but the care is inconsistently applied so right. like when the characters are doing sort of their idle animations as they talk and they bob their head it has a very wooden feel to mm-hmm. it yeah which is why you know when bryce talks about archer right hmm. and then when we were having this conversation i said well this is no ghost in the shell yeah well but, but archer also has a deliberate jank to it so sure, yeah. and we, yeah, and this yeah. is not trying to be deliberately weird or mm-hmm. off this is trying to be something with a particular budget in a, and they're using the style they have available to them. You know, more about Archer I mean, more like sort of like when they're standing there talking like a little had that feel to it but uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's definitely better animated than that and not that Archer I haven't think it's Archer it's just, you know Yeah well that's not that's I mean that's not what Archer's trying to do. Yeah. I don't come to Archer for the animation. No. <laughs> so, no. Uh-huh. Not at all. So, yeah. I don't have a ton more else to say about it other than I guess the original this is a sequel to the graphic novel that came out in 1998 so I guess oh long long tail yeah <laughs> long term plans to get a sequel to that um, but yeah I think it's 90 minutes I don't think it's it, you know it's like I say it doesn't overstay it's welcome but also a lot of things were undercooked in it so maybe it could have used some more time I don't mm-hmm. know if that would have helped or made it worse but mm-hmm. anyway I think it's a wor- it is worth a look if, you, if this sounds kind of interesting to you just to see or see it yeah I mean if you're interested in you know sort of world animation in general yeah. um, it's uh yeah, yeah, definitely worth at least looking up. Yeah. The anime influence can't be denied, so definitely, you know. Yeah, just don't get your expectations. No, no, <laughs> no, 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 don't have any expectations on this. Um, as I mentioned, oglink.com slash 4P1 and 4P2. Um, anything else to talk about? No. Yeah. There's nothing after the credits to see. We yeah. know that much. 
There you go. Don't wait for that stinger. Yeah. yeah. There is no Marvel stinger on this thing. So, for all the things we've mentioned, uh, check out our website, www.talkgeneration.net or just ognetworks.tv. Thank you again, Nando, for sending us goodies. Oh, my, um, yes. We are probably going to be eating them between the next show. Um, I'm certainly going to be eating them. I think uh, I think these will hold well enough. I'm going to take a box to New Year's for Albert. Oh, good time. Um, so with that said, a number of ways you can reach out. You can always hit us up via Discord and leave feedback, oglink.com slash feedback, or Discord if you just want to go directly on Discord and hang out. Uh, occasionally, John will be in there, you know, doing his sort of Minecraft recordings for the OG server. Um, if you want to get attached to the Minecraft server, just hit me up. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I don't know. But you can always hit us up by email at generation at gmail.com. Had a pause there for a yeah. thought. Um, so there. Okay, so we do, uh, we have fortunes. Uh, I don't know if one of you guys want to be the mat. Uh, so the, the fortune I'll for the next show is going to be for the decade. Ooh, okay. <laughs> no pressure. Well, <laughs> but this one is just for this this uh, week to get you okay, to the world the of year. guidance uh, to uh, get us through the 20 minutes until we record the next show. <laughs> yeah. Our obstacles are those frightful things you see when you take your eyes off the goal. That is your platitude, should you need one to sustain you. Yeah. <laughs> yes, indeed. All right, everyone. Until next week, have a good one. Bye bye. <laughs>